have had an online quote from Octopus Energy to fit me a heat pump and I am definitely terrified about changing a combi boiler system to a heat pump. In this video I'm going to be explaining the process from Octopus Energy to get that done, what my concerns are and how I'll only be getting a heat pump if it's from a certain brand of heat pump manufacturer and also we'll be telling you what that price is from Octopus Energy to change my boiler system. Now if you click this video because it's about heat pumps it might be worth clicking subscribe down below because I'm going to be following my journey on here right down from the actual physical quote where Octopus come round because at the moment it's only an online quote telephone quote and then if I do go ahead with the heat pump the installation process and then reviews of how the system is performing so if you're thinking of getting a heat pump from Octopus Energy or another provider and you've got genuine concerns about how it might work it might be worth watching this entire series now I do some other videos on my channel about solar, battery storage and electric cars and other tech. So if you're interested in that sort of stuff as well, maybe check out some of the other videos that I've already done about solar and battery storage and even reviews on EV chargers. Now let's get back to my house and tell you why my home isn't suited for a heat pump. Now my house is a new build, I bought it new myself about six years ago and it's designed was about seven years ago which means it's got fairly decent insulation in the loft space, fairly decent insulation between the walls which is like a blown in gas pill thing that they put in. So it's a very well insulated home so you'd think oh it's perfect Nick, perfect for heat pump, insulated perfect. However because of the way new builds build homes it has some flaws to it which is that the radiators are extremely small in every single room and there are only single panel radiators with a single fin on the back. Now this isn't a huge concern some of you may say because you can change radiator sizes but you are a little bit restricted because it might encroach in the room if you're going for a free panel radiator and they'll look a bit ugly and a bit horrible looking in a room so you could go for a uh, double fin radiator which might improve the heat but you're also restricted on how long you can go in my rooms because some of them are under windows or in doorways so there is some genuine reasons why there might be a problem with changing radiator sizes in an existing build like this which has been designed to fit these radiators in. Next we move into the next genuine concern which is to do with the pipe sizes to my radiators. And that's because the pipe size in my radiator is, is microbore. Now microbore is typically used in new build homes for quite some time now because it's cheaper and easier to fit. It comes in at two different sizes, eight millimeter microbore and 10 millimeter microbore. Microbore pipe does not carry as much water and therefore not as much heat or flow rate through it, which means that you don't get the heat dispersed into your room at lower flow rates which heat pumps work on. So heat pumps work on a colder temperature than your gas boiler, they travel with more sort of 45C temperature, 50 degree temperature water around your home to heat it rather than what a boiler would typically carry which might be 65, 70 on even some older homes maybe even a little bit hotter than that. So because of that the, the, the pipe restriction does mean that less flow around my house means that the heat pump could struggle. Now Octopus have a solution for this and until recently they weren't doing any microbore homes but if you have 10 millimeter microbore they do have a solution for fitting in a heat pump. Now I luckily have 10 millimeter microbore not 8 millimeter microbore. If I had 8 millimeter microbore they just couldn't do it. I also at the moment run my house in open firm with Tadu system so that does modulate the heat at the moment in my radiators. Now it doesn't always run at a very hot temperature, it does typically tend to run at a much colder temperature. I do need to do some maybe more tests on what that is but I think at the moment I'm, I'm hoping it's around about 50, 55 C and it does get warm, you know, it just takes longer to get warm, but my house is warm. But I have some other concerns over the radiator piping size because of Facebook. Before we go back to the Facebook issue I just mentioned, let's talk about another issue we have, and that is that I'm on a combi boiler system. Now, combi boilers heat water for your shower on demand. That means that when you have a shower or a bath, they heat that water as it's passing through the pipes. Now, heat pumps have stored energy of, of, of heat so they store it in a big tank. Now because I've got a combi system 
I don't have a tank. It's always been a common system, so there's nowhere a tank could go. Now, if you already have a big tank, then it's much easier for you to have a heat pump. But if you're on a combi system, you need somewhere to put a tank. Now, luckily for me, I don't have a converted loft space, which means I can put the tank in the loft. Now, there is a limit on what Octopus will install in the loft, um, and it, depending on how many baths, showers, and taps you've got in your house, it might not be possible to get one done without an engineering report to find out if your loft can take the weight of that stored water, because water is pretty heavy. So that is another concern, but I do have one final concern, and that is where do I physically put this huge unit of a heat pump. Now they're not the most attractive things in the world, so we'll get back to aesthetics and my problem with aesthetics later on, but we also don't want it in the back garden because I want a plenty of play space. They're quite big units and I, I kind of want my son to grow up and have plenty of space in the garden to play toys and put things and not, not have this heat pump in the way. So what I have an idea of, I do have a small space uh, in between my house, between the pavement and some land I own at the side of my house, and I'd like to put it there. Now the problem is, under current planning rules, you can't put a heat pump so close to a public accessible spot like this. Now luckily, the planning laws are about to change. So hopefully, by the time I get my heat pump installed, these planning conditions have gone. If not, it will require a separate application under planning rules to apply for planning to get that done. Now, a couple of years ago, I was extremely lucky to be invited to Octopus Energy's heat pump R&D center. They spent several million pounds in building a heat pump training center and R&D development center for engineers to learn how to install heat pumps, for them to try new technologies and new tech. And I was completely blown away, not only by the investment, but the, the hiring of extremely intelligent, knowledgeable staff and doctors, professors of all sorts of stuff around heat pump and heating technology to work out the best solutions and planning of how to install heat pumps at a lower cost. Now, Octopus's drive is to bring down the cost of heat pumps, which they are definitely, definitely doing. In fact, we've even seen British Gas and other energy companies start entering the race to install heat pumps. But Octopus Energy, I said to them at the time, and we, we, this wasn't unfortunately recorded on camera, I said there's no way you can drive down the total cost of heat pumps without making a heat pump and they smiled and went yes that's true which was obviously a big hint for what happened a couple of months later which is when they bought out red energy red was a heat pump manufacturer in northern ireland that octopus energy purchased and this year octopus energy have announced their own heat pump in the cozy six and this is the heat pump that I want installing for many, many reasons. One of them is definitely aesthetics. It's a much better looking unit, but also some of the way that's gonna work and the technology that it's combined with to work. Now you think armed with this knowledge, I would be completely happy with getting a heat pump, but unfortunately I have the same concerns as everyone else. And the first concern, which is the only reason why we have a heating system is, will it keep me warm? Because if it's not gonna keep the house warm, then you don't want a heat pump. You want to be warm in your own house. You don't want to get cold. And having a heat pump that doesn't keep you warm is a real concern. Now, these microbore pipes, even though Octopus said they can handle them, it was a real concern because you hear about people talking about how microbore pipes don't work with heat pumps. So I was wondering if the branches from my boiler had thicker pipes running down this, you know, basically corridors of my house and they were only tapped off to smaller pipes when they went to the radiator. So I asked in a local group, which was to do for our estate about, you know, does anyone have the floorboards up? Does anyone know what the size of the pipe is? And a plumber, lovely, lovely glass, gas engineer for it, replied and basically told me heat pumps don't work and they definitely don't work on microbore and that I basically need some stupid size of about 45 millimeter pipe work, which, really panicked me. I mean, genuinely, I was concerned. And then I remembered that Octopus are a national fitting company who fit heat pumps. And this is a gas engineer that only fits gas boilers. So there could be a little bit of fear of technology and also the lack of understanding of where technology has gone. But it really did fill me with dread, especially when you see articles in the Daily Telegraph of people ripping out heat pumps, saying they're not working. But then you also see other people like heat geeks on uh, uh, 
Twitter and also on YouTube, who talks about many heat pumps aren't installed correctly and that's why people aren't getting warm from heat pumps. So with, armed with all this information, I was starting to get less worried, but I still had one massive concern and that is cost, okay? So I am a green person, I care about the environment, but at the end of the day, if I'm gonna get a heat pump and it's gonna cost me more than running a gas boiler, I could spend that money on other projects that are better at reducing CO2 for my own personal uh, benefit rather than just changing to a heat pump just because it gives me a green washy feeling. If it's going to cost me more money, I might as well stick with gas at the moment, which is a perfectly gas working boiler, and spend that money on something else. I have 10 solar panels on the roof at the moment. I have storage batteries in the garage at the moment. And if I put a heat pump in and it would suck all the power out of the solar panels, which in the winter when the heat pump is going to be running at full power, they don't produce a lot of energy and the batteries are almost empty now and it's the middle of winter. So again, I could spend money on more batteries first before getting a heat pump. If it's going to cost me more money to run, that is a genuine concern. However, you've got to remember there's some other things that are at play for me. So first of all, I get peak electricity at 30p, I get off-peak electricity at 7.5p, that's for when the car's charging, and the Octopus tariff is combined with this. Now, Octopus Cozy 6 should work with their adaptive intelligent tariffs, meaning that I should get more 7.5p electric when running the Cozy and the car at the same time, which means that Cozy will be using the same price electricity that gas is. So gas is 7.5p and uh, electric at 7.5p off peak, which means they are the same pr price parity. That's not the worry. In peak, however, I'm paying 30p. So that means that you'd think that the heat pump would cost me more during peak hours. Now, obviously, I know all about load shifting and those 7.5s will soon be off put, but we need to understand about COP and how a heat pump works. Now, first of all, a heat pump works about for COP. Now, we'll get back to this. We need to explain what COP is. COP is a form of measurement for efficiency for heat pumps. So a gas boiler is 90% efficient. That means for one kilowatt hour of energy in, that's 7.5 one kilowatt energy in, at the other end, you will get 0.90 kilowatts of heat. So there's a 10% loss of putting energy in to getting energy out of a gas boiler. We all appreciate there's losses involved in that. However, our heat pump works differently. A heat pump will generate for one kilowatt in, typically about four kilowatts out, which means that you get a cop of 4%. Also, you could say 400% efficiency. Now, 4% Cop, uh, four cop is quite a normal number four cop on a heat pump. In very cold days, they could run down to two, and in very warm days, they could be a lot, bit, lot better. Obviously, a heat pump for a house will be working 24 seven, seven days a week because you're gonna be having showers, washing your hands. So there's a lot of hot water storage up there, typically just for all that anyway. So that's when the heat pump efficiency will go up and down. When it's warmer outside, the heat pump won't work working as hard. Better cop when it's really cold outside, minus temperatures, the heat pump will be working harder and that cop rate will drop. Now, cop rate of four will give you price parity with gas at the moment. So that means if I'm paying 30p for electric and the heat pump runs at four cop, I'll be paying roughly about 7.5p for the cop of the heat pump, which means price parity with gas. However, obviously the way I'm going to be working it is using some off-peak energy from Octopus Intelligent, which means my averages should mean that I am less, much less than gas. So my worry around this has gone away a little bit. My next worry is to do with aesthetics. I bought my house because I liked its curb appeal. It looks a pretty house on the front. I really do generally like the look of it. It's one of the things that my, my wife really liked about it when we bought the house. We both agreed it's a pretty house. It's nice little pretty bay windows. It's got a nice frontage and we like the aesthetics of the fake stone we've got on the front. So it's a nice looking house. We love it. We absolutely love it. What we don't want to do is ruin it by having networks of pipes all over the outside of the house. We don't really want that. We underappreciate that having a heat pump, we're going to have some pipe work outside, we appreciate that. But what we don't want is absolute networks of it, which are com com basically causing a complete eyesore to our building that we are in love with. So this is something that I don't know how it's gonna work because we need to get pipes to the loft. 
We need to obviously get pipes to where they are at the moment, where the boiler is, and we need to work out with Octopus when they do their on-site visit, how the pipes are gonna be routed, where we're gonna see them, and how we can best hide them or minimize the look and appearance of them to when we'll see them. Now, I'm sure this is also a concern for many other people. So when the Octopus engineer comes around, I'll try and ask as many questions around this as possible and do this all into a video to explain to you people. Uh, if you are also genuinely concerned about this, please let me know down below in the comments so I know that I'm just not being an idiot about this. Now, finally, we get to find out the price that Octopus Energy have quoted over the phone for giving me a heat pump. Now they went through various questions like, when was your house built? Do you think you've got microbore? Um, all sorts of questions around stuff like this, where I'd like the heat pump to go, where I'd like the tank to go. So most of these sort of basic questions have been answered. What they do need to do now is come around and do a survey, but the price they give me on the phone is at the moment, based on the time of recording this video, including a seven thousand five hundred pound bus grant from the government that's boiler replacement grant so at the time of the recording video the grant is at seven and a half grand so bear in mind if that grant changes your price will also change now to this is to install a heat pump put a tank in the loft pipe it and i believe also they'll change a couple of radiators included in this quote and the quote i was given at the time was one thousand three hundred and fifty pound which I think is an extraordinary cheap price. That is cheaper than replacing my current boiler with a new gas boiler. But more importantly, I pay an insurance price and maintenance package on my boiler because it's out of warranty. And after four years, I will get my money back and the boiler is obviously insured, but the new heat pump will have, I think, I believe a five year warranty. So four years, had my money back already, plus I get an extra year warranty, and then a heat pump should be in theory cheaper to maintain and insure, and you won't have to have gas inspections on that. So there's a lot of money saving just based on the general running of a heat pump. Now, if you're interested about the heat pump training center I went to go and see with Octopus, check out that video here, but if you're interested in getting solar, maybe check out this video here. Thank you very much.